now because I have to do Good morning and a belated Happy New Year and welcome to the Morning Post brought to you by the Racing Post and sponsored by William Hill. We haven't quite got the racing that we thought we were going to have because Sandown was lost to the weather as early as Thursday, it chucked it down with rain. Good news is the Veterans Chase, they are looking at saving that, but we won't be watching it today. We've got some action from Wincanton and Newcastle, uh, and we're going to be looking at a couple of races on Sunday as well. Uh, and we've got a fine panel uh, to join us. Um, but don't forget, first of all, like, subscribe, share and comment. And please don't be shy, call me anything you like. I've definitely heard it before. Now, talking of names, uh, the man next on my left has been called a few in his time. He's known as uh, it's Graham Rodway, G Rod, Rodders, and if you've had the misfortune to play golf with him, plodders. I mean, you never, you will not believe someone can fall 50 yards behind in the first hundred, but this man can. He ambles away. How are you, mate? Yeah, very well, thanks, Kills. Yeah, I hope you had a good New Year. It's been a good start to the year, hasn't it? Very wet, of course. Oh, incredibly wet, mate. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to set down today, are we? No, no. I'm, <laughs> still to tempt, I'm still trying to tempt you to come down the pub, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, we're not going. We're not going races. I'm unfortunate. No, unfortunately. Unfortunate. All right, next up, William Hill Ambassador, <laughs> Matty Bachelor, I wish. once <laughs> once renowned as the biggest joker in the weighing room, but not for your riding. Well, I thought it would have been for the riding. No, <laughs> good sense of humour, Kills. Yeah, all good. You got Rod. Yeah, yeah, very well. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah um, I, last last year, I brought my kids in um, to the studio because I was in London. And uh, I told them that they were going to meet one of the most famous jockeys in the weighing room, and uh, Batch was here. Luckily. He didn't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> they bumped into me. <laughs> but they loved. They loved it. You know. You they... had your moments, though, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. rode Carruthers to win a Hennessy. Carruthers, yeah, it was good. Yeah, C Cody Green, Cody his early Green's career. Cody first yeah. four, and they told you got dropped off by some posh bloke. So what was all that about? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, he had a free barrelled name. I can't remember his <laughs> name. <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah, he improved when I got off him, but. That's no, been great over Christmas. Great, seen some great horses. I was talking just off camera there about Marine Nationale, and I just thought his jumping was sublime. Yeah, he was, he was amazing. Now, anyway, before we get into the nitty gritty, we've got one more special guest to bring to, to bring to you. Unfortunately, we could not persuade her to come and join three geriatric old men in the London offices, but we've got Leona Mayer uh, up north somewhere. <laughs> Hello, Leona. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay, thank you. Um, I was worried then when we did the William Hill Ambassador, which I didn't know Matthew was, Joker, I thought we were then coming to me, so I'm happy ah, Matthew's right. there, okay, and I've been yes. let off that Another role. William Hill Ambassador, <laughs> that is you, and uh, former jockey, now Sky Sports and ITV racing presenter as well, and you were tipping winners left, right and centre at Newcastle the other day, is that right? Yeah, I've had, do you know what? I've had a good few days, I'm not going to lie. Um, I've had a few naps winning last few days that have been decent prices. Last, last Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day it was. Yeah, last Thursday at Newcastle and Thursday just gone as well. So I've had a, I've had a good few days. Yeah, good all I could see on my, on my Twitter feed was another winner for Leona Mayer, another winner for Leona Mayer. I thought, hang on a minute, well, she's doing the wrong job and I'm doing the wrong job, that's for sure. Now, but this, <laughs> yeah, same that, again today. We've got you, that's why we've got you on here. You're going to give us a few tips for Wink Hanton this afternoon, is that right? I'm going to do my very best. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I have to say, disappointing, no sand down, but, you know, we're glad we've got anything on and, you know, everything's OK and things can be rescheduled. It's not the end of the world, is it? But looking forward to what we it's have. It's not. Got. I tell you what, though, it is harder to get stuck into average racing, isn't it? Because you don't know the horses. You've actually got to work a lot harder, haven't you? Well, you can speak for yourself. I know lots of average horses. It's what I do in the week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spend a lot of time at these smaller tracks with these horses. So We rode a few I as well. I honestly don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I seem to tip more winners at the kind of average fair than I do at the big days by the looks of things of late. So I'm fine with it. Right, this is your ballpark then. So far away, give us your winners for today. Oh, you just want them like that, do yeah. you? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so are we doing the three Wincanton races first? We are, yeah. Yeah, so I, that 205, I thought loads of them had struggled going into Handicap Company. I didn't think there was a great deal of pace on in the race. So I'm going to give one last glance, another chance here to kind of get that head back in front. I thought showed, retained all the ability uh, last time after 612 days off the track, which is some amount of time. Um I'm not a big believer in the whole bounce factor thing. I think if you've got a horse fit and ready and they prove they're back, then hopefully they're back. So I think one last glance will try and make all. So I put that up in there. That's value, I think, sevens, eight, something like that, which I was fine with. 
Um, the 240, Georgia Saint, I'm going to stick with. It's a little boring, but I actually thought he'd be a shorter price than he is. I think he's still value. Um, four from seven over fences overall. A lot of them have been in France, but two from three here over fences. And it sounds odd to say a horse that's won four times over fences still seems to be learning, but I do think he is. He still makes mistakes. He can still be a bit guessy and steppy at a few. I think he's another one who's probably the pace angle. Um, so I think he'll pop off in front. He's been in class three, grade three, the last twice, the same grade. Um, so he's not going up in grade any. Um, so I thought he was super interesting. And, and obviously, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will talk about it plenty, but... I do massively think that when the ground's super heavy or super soft, etc., I think horses, regardless of the track, I think they struggle to get into things from the back because the majority of them won't go too quick because they know they're trying to stay on the ground. I then think it's very, very hard to get into races from the back. We've seen so much of it in recent weeks. You know, these Venetia horses as well, you know, they just sit either in front, second, third, they just keep finding. Um, I think that's what will happen with George Saint. Uh, so I was very interested in that one. And then that 3.15, I'm going to go a bit awry, I think. I, I, I didn't, I, I think the indivi individualist could well run another big race, but I think Bumpy Johnson um, at the prices, that's going to be my bigger price horse for the day. He claimed um, to be talented I, once, Bumpy Johnson, didn't he? Yeah, well, I think he, I mean, I think he's all right over hurdles. I just think he went chasing, the wheels fell off. Um, he's back on his last winning mark now, going back over hurdles. I know he's got 12 stones to carry, which is a bit of a gripe, but... You know, he, in theory, he's the best horse in the race. In this fear, he's more reliable than others if you look at those hurdling numbers. Um, again, something Matty could tell you a lot more about than me, but these horses sometimes, you know, you think they're going to make chases, they jump well over hurdles, and you think, oh, they make chase of this. They go chasing, and they just haven't got the guts for it. They're not brave enough, or they're not clever enough, they're not quick enough to get their feet out of the way. That's how he's looked. I mean, he's ran two, two pretty poor races um, over fences, so back over hurdles. I think he's 18 to 1, maybe. I think he's a huge prize. So, um, they're the three at Wincanton. Oh, well, well worth uh, all the others. Well, <laughs> well, no, well, worth, well worth thinking about that one. Uh, Matty was nodding his head in agreement with uh, what you were saying about the, the chasing there. So, uh, a prime example of that is Big Bucks. Yeah, never, yeah. never took to chasing. Yeah, just didn't like it. Never, he could have been a Gold Cup winner, <laughs> disappointing in the Hennessy, and that was all down to his jumping. But you look at the Pure, I was lucky enough to see him in the flesh, the pure size of him, scope of him. He was everything that a chaser should be. Yeah. And he yeah. just wasn't one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that. sometimes big big horses, Matty, you know, you think, oh, this will make a right chaser. And then actually they're big, lazy, clutchy. Yeah. They can't get their feet out of the way. They don't know how to use it behind, you know, and they just don't get from one side of you know, one side of a fence to the other economically. It always wor it also works on the other side. Sometimes like you're going to a paddock, I've done it before, and you're riding in a handicap chase, 16 runners, and you look at the horse you're riding, and it is as big as a hamster. And you're like, <laughs> I, I've done it, a friend of mine's horses, and he said, I'll sit in the middle, down the inside. I said, are you trying, are you having a laugh? He said, do you trust me? I said, yeah, 100%. And, well, this thing was like it had four springs on each hoofs, and it went and won a Scottish National, and it was unbelievable jumper. And, and he was tiny. Yeah. Tiny. What horse is that? Iris de Balm. No oh, way. Right. Sean Curran. Sean Curran, Sean yeah. Curran, yeah. Charlie yeah. Huxley won the yeah. Scottish National on it, yeah. 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 So you were scared, but it worked out well. Oh, it was absolutely unbelievable, Leona. It was, yeah, one of those just you typical French bread. You could go in, leave it alone, and it had more moves than Fred Astaire. I know you wouldn't know who Fred Astaire was, Rod, because you're, you're a very young man. Young. Unlike that, you don't look it, but... <laughs> right, so, Leona, you've given us three. I gather you've got some more, and your nap doesn't feature in those uh, three races of Wincanton. No, my nap and my next best for today's racing that are on that will be on social, so I don't want to not give you them. They're both from Newcastle, actually. Um, I made a point of going through Newcastle a lot yesterday because I was worried that Wincanton would be off too. Um, my best bet at Wincanton out of the ones I've given is probably one last glance, but my nap and my next best. Nap is that um, decent horse of Diva Racing in the 105 at Newcastle, Space Voyage, uh, another horse who's got a really solid record over hurdles, nothing to knock. He was outclassed last time, so happy to ignore that. Still very unexposed over staying trips. I just thought a very solid option um, for the nap. I haven't looked again what price he is this morning, but I can do it now. 
think he's second or third in. He's about four to one, I think. So happy with that. And then the next best, I've actually backed these two in a double, which I often do if I've got enough in the next best, just to try and get value. Um, good old Bill, um, great name, in the 250. Um, won over fences last time, very little chasing experience, was 33 to one. So on paper, it was a surprise. Um, but I have to say, I think that, you know, it was just a case of maybe not knowing the horse. He jumped really well in front. He jumped much the best. He stayed very well. Um, I just didn't think it was a fluke at all. You know, sometimes you think it's just kind of, it's just, you know, it won't run the same again. It won't repeat the form. I don't think that's the case. The second and the third on that day, who were rated much, much higher, could both come out and placed in their respective races since, which bolsters the form, you know, that it wasn't a fluke. Um so good old Bill is another one who I thought was worth the next best, um, but has been really well backed. I think his favourite now. Fantastic! Um, you, you certainly have done your homework. We can tell you that <laughs> William Hill are boosting uh, the Nap Space Voyage. Uh, I think Dave, uh, the producer, telling us it was a six to one. I'm not 100 percent sure about that, but we'll we'll, we'll confirm that about later. Yeah, now six to one going to Dave. So. Uh, I was a little bit worried about whether she'd actually stay. She should do, being a cave tarver, but she didn't look to see it out that that well last time. Although it was, she was out of her depth, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, we've got um, William Hill went non one and no bet for Cheltenham uh, on Monday, New Year's Day. Leona, is anything yeah. take your eye then? I've got a few. <laughs> Again, sorry. <laughs> I'll say I'll talk. <laughs> no, you anyway. go ahead. You go. It makes my job um, miles easier. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I got shouted at for this one by numerous people. So if you're watching this and you shouted at me, you shouldn't have. Give people a break. Just saying. Um, I said about Hewitt in the Gold Cup, right? And I happened to say, you know, I fancied him for that at the prices. I don't necessarily think he can beat Galpan, but I just think he's too big a price. I think he's about four teams, isn't he? So I mentioned that and I said, maybe they went quick enough and kind of set the race up for him. Well, everyone jumped on my back. They did go too quick. The times didn't, you know, show that. I was like, oh. So that makes me even more confident then that it wasn't to do with the times and Hewitt was just unbelievable and passed them in a matter of strides. So I backed him each way already for the Gold Cup now, just because I think he's worth the chance. Um, I love Shark. It'd be a great story. I've also backed Lucia um, in the Mayor's race on the Tuesday. Um, I know connections of Lucia, I know the owners and I know friends of the owners, etc. She's had a few issues, Lucia, I don't know if it was ever publicised, but I think she had a few sinus issues or something like that. Basically, she, was, she wasn't well. Um, they've always thought a lot of her, so kind of a few of those poorer runs before the last one, um, there was reasons for them, basically. So I think she's got plenty more to go at. I was really taken with her last time after winning when she was keen. Um, I think she's a decent male, Lucia. I, I like it. The one thing that I think will happen for her is I think they'll go, you know, with it being a Cheltenham race, I know she's going up in trip and she can race keenly, but I think they'll go plenty quick enough as they do in those better races. And I just think it'll be the perfect scenario for her. She's about 16 to 1. I've well, backed her. Um, and then this is the fun one, which I think, I don't know if you're talking about the Irish racing later with, with or without me, but um, in the Albert Bartlett, Croke Park, I don't know if any of you have watched him yet, Gordon's. He's about 18 to 1 uh, for the Albert Bartlett at the moment on the Friday. They paid 400 grand for him from Goffs. He's an absolute big brute of a horse. He definitely wants at least three miles. Um, he's won over two and a half. He runs tomorrow um, in the Lawlers, and I think he'll win that. And I don't think you'll get anywhere near 16s, 18s <clears throat> um, for him at Cheltenham. So he runs at Nace tomorrow in the Lawlers. So after he's won, you won't get any price about him. So if you're going to do it, you probably need to do it today. Unbelievable. You make me look like an amateur. I've never even heard of it. I'm supposed to be looking at oh, when, when he on. wins tomorrow when go. he wins tomorrow, you'll be like, right, that's what she was All talking right, yeah, about. We know Leona, Le Le listen, brilliant, brilliant to have you on. Great to, great to get all your advice. Uh, you certainly have done your done your homework. Have a great day. Thanks for coming on. Awesome. Thank you. See you, Leona. Lovely pajamas See as you, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to get away, but I knew you'd say something. <laughs> Leona was wearing the bottom half of her pyjamas. She wasn't even dressed, uh, but she did. Uh, she did. She was perfectly presentable for us, anyway. <laughs> right now, we better we better meet the man from William Hill because I forgot to do that. I always get things wrong on this thing. This show. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Jamie McBride, William Hill trader. How are you? Good, thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah. Good. Morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Morning. Yeah. Happy New Year to you. We've got a boost as well. We've got to get that out. Haven't we? Your, your, your boost of the day. Because uh, it's already 15 minutes in and I should have told people about this ages ago. 
Yeah, we've got a couple of boosts. We've got obviously you mentioned Leona's. We're six to one from four to one. Her nap. And the other boost is individualist in the 315 win cant, and we are three to one from two to one. Three to one from two to one. It looked like being an awful lot shorter than that at one point, didn't it? But it does seem it does seem very weak in the market. We will be on to talk about that though shortly. But Jamie, you've done you've gone non one and no bet. How has that gone for you in, in, in this week? You've had lots of lots of business. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, yeah, very popular. Uh, there was a spike in activity as soon as we did it on Monday uh, when people were waking up uh, on Monday morning. Um, actually, your, your, I see you put up a lucky 15 early in the week. They've been really popular, especially It's For Me in the Supreme. His uh, form was obviously boosted by Caldwell Potter over Christmas. Uh, Leona mentioned Ewick in the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup's been extremely busy. I, I'm quite surprised by this, but I suppose... Well, I'm surprised because Gallopin looks as though... He was back to his best at Christmas and maybe killed the race stone dead. But there's, there, ha there has been a lot of uh, each way interest in the race. Uh, I guess there was only 20 entries when uh, the entries were unveiled on Tuesday. So it looks as though it could be a smallish field. And people are going for the anti-post horses like Huey. Uh, Brave Man Games has been popular. Lawn Press has been popular. Robbie Wilder's put him up in today's paper. Uh, so people are looking for each way alternatives. Uh, and I'll just put up... Uh, Couple to mention in the handicaps. Uh, Langadang's been well back, which probably isn't surprising. People haven't really been uh, fooled by his uh, form this autumn. And Stellar Story is the first uh, Gordon Elliott buzzer in the Martin Pipe, but I'm sure he won't be the last. No, no, no. There'll be, there'll be six or seven more of them in it. Right, before we get into the action, we're just going to have a quick look at what's in the papers. Are we? Yes, we are. Look, New Year's resolutions. Anybody actually make those? Uh, Any more? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> They're broke in the first one. Right, here we go. Wind counters in Newcastle. Come to the rescue as rain wipes out Premier Racing. Yeah, you can actually say it's not, not exactly Premier Racing, is it? Not as today. We, no. As we will soon find out when we go through them. Fedor worth backing at 25 to 1 in a potentially soft Ryanair, says anti postman Robbie Wilders. I'd never even considered him for that. George's Saint has the scope to keep on improving. A Venetia Williams train favourite that we will be having a look at very shortly. Mini Yates has potential to grow into a big hitter, says none other than, uh, says Keith Melrose. I believe that Mr Rodway fancies that one too. We'll talk about that soon. It will be tight between the big two at Nace, but it's Firefox for me, says Johnny Deneen. Uh, the bookmaker turned pro punter, whose wager of the weekend is Largy Hill at Cork today. Course form a big plus for Jackamar, says Tom Siegel of Pricewise. I'm hoping he's wrong because I backed something else in the race. There we go. Right, on to today's action. And we go straight in. We've got three races from Wincant to start with the 205A handicap hurdle. Now, we've mentioned Mini H. Uh, we've got some sorry, we've got some prices coming first, uh, Jamie. Yep, uh, we have four places on this race, but it looks as though punters are concentrating on the front end of the market. Uh, four of a kind's favourite. He's been really solid, and there's also been good money for the second. And I'll I'll go with Fik Amak. Uh, hopefully, that's uh, reasonably close to how you should pronounce it. But uh, those two are easily the most popular. All right, it means look out, apparently, Fik Amak, but. Uh, yeah. We couldn't work out how to pronounce it, so that's what we're going with. Uh, sounds good enough to me. Well well look, look now, uh, Rodders, yes. um, I actually thought you wrote that piece about it uh, <laughs> because I know that you fancy Mini Yates. Yeah, no. Uh, I, so I, give us the case for him. I didn't have to do any of that because um, I wasn't working yesterday, you see, so uh, it was a rare Friday off for me. But I do fancy Mini Yates in the same way as Mel Rose does here. Um, off the track for a long time, comes back last time out. Wing Canton, wasn't it? Course and distance. Uh, it was well beaten, but the winner uh, looked pretty smart. One of Anthony Honeyballs, can't remember the name, but won by an absolute mile. Um, they were all in a bit of a heap in behind. The time was pretty solid, though, and uh, the, se the second, I think, has run well since. The third's won since, so the form is really good. A really weak race, this, isn't it? Yeah, really I mean, it, 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 it is a weak race. I mean, I mean it's, it's racing you know, off I mean, 99. This, I mean, this one would have been on TV anyway. It's not a Saturday race, really, no. is it? Like, you know what I mean? But... but uh, <laughs> My issue with him was I thought they would have been howling at the handicapper because he actually went up ten pounds for that one. He didn't did he? go up ten pounds. Yeah, I mean I can only presume that he, he finished among a bunch of horses who were rated much higher yeah, than him, didn't yeah. he, that day? But 
I was more interested in the way, like, I, I think that was a strong race. You know why? Cool. We've had this discussion before, haven't we? Cool. The time was good and they finished fast. You know, that's oh, my magic right. combination, isn't yeah, it? Fast time, absolutely. fast yeah, finish. Yeah. I like those, that. What happened to them ones last week? You know, so three or four weeks ago. <laughs> finished very slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they yeah, left their fast finish behind like, last time. They ain't going to be finished. They're not going to be, one thing they're not going to be doing is finishing fast in no. this ground. That we well, when I say fast time, obviously, yeah. uh, I'm talking about in, in this grade. You yeah. know, it's not a fast time, no, obviously, no, but for yeah, this grade, yeah. it's, I'm, it's a good time. I, and I, a, and I a good would hope finish. that we understand that, but well, well, worth, yeah. well, well worth pointing out. Now, Matty, what do you know about this favourite four of a kind? Because he's been tailed off in two ways. Well, it, it baffles me how he's favourite. He won a maiden at Haydock and has been, for me, very underwhelming up till then. So unless they've seen something that we haven't at home, it's... It this is, is it, it's strange. He's got terrible, terrible recent form. Yeah. Literally four stone off what's going to be required to win this. Yeah, I just... However, I, I, Mr I, Harry Derham is rather a good trainer. Yeah. And he's had eight winners from his last 15 runners. Yeah. It's, it's trained by one of the few trainers in the race that I've actually heard of. Like, I mean, uh, we've, we've, we've plenty <laughs> of respect. Hold on, hold on. Nigel Hawk. There's plenty of respect to you Nigel You've not heard of Nigel Hawk. What's his name? Joe Tickle. Yeah. Well, Tom Gretton and, and what's the other one? Tom Mark Gretton, Gillard he's a singer, isn't he? He's a singer. Mitchell Hunt and people like that. Oh, at least I've heard of Harry. Nigel Hawk, yeah. you must have heard of him. <laughs> yes. Come of on. course I've heard of Nigel Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was Tiger Roll's trainer, wasn't he? Uh, uh, he's also he's famous, famous for something. No. No, what's he famous for? Come on. He rode a national winner. Yeah, national winner. Uh, it was before my time, obviously. Seagram. Seagram. Uh, before yeah, my yeah. time, Oh, obviously. here he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he goes, the you silver fox. You will not believe this, right? And the biggest outsider of the day is coming. Matty Batchett is actually six years older than Roger. <laughs> that is, I mean, how can I look this good <laughs> and be older than this <laughs> fine-looking gentleman? <laughs> it's, it's one of those mysteries of life. 41 on Monday. <laughs> I, thought, well, I seriously <laughs> thought you were winding me up when you said you are 41 on Monday. <laughs> anyway, oh anyway, anyway get back to my tip. What was it? How did he pronounce that name again? Jack Tickle or what? No, no Fika, oh, oh, Fika, 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 Fika Mac. Fika Mac. So Fika Mac. As well, are you? I'm tipping Fika Mac. Right, okay. Here we go. One at Sedgefield, okay, fortuitous winner. The second horse sort of gave it away, the Jenny Cannon's horse. Up the running, as many horses do at Sedgefield. But they were definitely 25 lengths plus clear of the remainder. And receiving all the allowances, the mayor's allowance, four-year-old allowance, only carrying 10 stone five. So that sort of... And in that ground round there, I mean, it takes a lot of rain to make Wincanton heavy. So they must have had absolute yeah. deadly. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've gone for her as well. Mm. Uh, I was having a look at it, I thought, how can I tip anything in this race? Because it is a bad race. Yeah. And when you saw she was 33 at one last time and you looked at her previous form and you thought she's done well, it would be a short 33s. But it was only the second time in her life she'd run on soft ground. Yeah. And on the first time, it was in a Leopardstown Maiden where she was four and a bit lengths fourth to warm heart. Yeah, the grounds definitely helps her. Definitely, yeah. And the third in that race was uh, is a dual group three winner as well. So, I mean, you know, she, she, she was an 80 horse on the flat just about. Mm. And she's 93 over hurdles, getting loads of weight allowances. I think she's got to have a massive chance. Massive. I thought Stairvitz would have a, a little chance. I like horses that have been chasing, but clearly doesn't like chasing back over hurdles. And his hurdle form, at that sort of price, you'd give him a squeak. I've but. done that a few times. You tend to, they, they tend to... Jump the first few a bit big, don't they, when they go back over? They do sometimes, but when I think for him, definitely, he is he is not a chaser. He wouldn't jump fences like you should jump a fence, hence why he's come back. So I think he he relished the sort of the time back over hurdles. Absolutely right, Jamie. What what was your take on the race? Yeah, I thought um, the Fika Mac was the interesting one. Uh, his one would be uh, keeping on the right side of a little bit. Righty-o. Right, we move on to the 240, two-and-a-half mile handicap chase. Jamie, stay with you. How do we bet on this one? Yeah, another extra place here. We're three places instead of two on the seven-runner race. Uh, again, the story of the race is a really solid uh, favourite, George's Saint. Uh, obviously, Leona gave him a good, mess, uh, a good mention. Um, he's been really, really solid, two-to-one favourite. And the second favourite, who'll go in contrast, has been weak. We were three-to-one on Thursday, and he's out to 92 at the moment. 
Right, what was your take on this? Is it is it George's Saint for you? I think yeah, I think he is the solid one. I mean, I do I do if Hugo kept on uh, drifting, he, I think he'd probably be the one I'd want to bet if he ever got to sort of eleven to two, six to one, because I I think back in trip and uh, back at Wynn Canton, and uh, I think Freddie Gingell's going to keep the ride even though uh, Harry Cobden's available. So he'd be the one for me if he kept on drifting. I think he'd get to a backable price. Right, OK, mate. Thanks very much. Right, George is saying for Leona. Jack, I'm half a price-wise. What is it for Matty Batch? I am. I want to go with George Saint just for his recent form and Vinicius' recent form. Winner at Foss Lass, impressive winner, 12 lengths winner at Fakenham. But everyone's sort of gone for that. He'll go definitely sand down, not his track. He, if you look back in his form, all his good form is on... Flatter tracks. Obviously, Wincanton and Taunton. You didn't uh, stay last time anyway. No, no, and no. Uh, you, you need to stay at stand down on that sort of ground. He clearly didn't stay. But I, I would give Jacobar a chance as well. He, he had a good run back there over course and distance. Cheeks pieces back on. But yeah, it's very hard to look further than George's Saint for me. Yeah, I check, my, my worry with George's Saint is he actually looked like he was booked for third off for a fair while of that Fakenham race. So the front two bounded clear of him jumping the third last uh, and they just stopped. And it wasn't much of a race, was it? Funny track, isn't it? Mm. Fakenham. Fakenham can do that. You can... I remember riding... Do York. they go too fast? Because they, they can do. very tight, don't they? They can do. Well and horses out. can not take to it. I remember I rode King Harold round there, one at the festival for me. He absolutely hated it round there. He j it was just too sharp for him. He was a big horse, never going, but his ability got him on in the end. And George is saying, it's, I just don't think he took to faking them. Two probably did go a little bit hard up front, and he got there in the end because he, he stayed better. I forgot you wrote King Harold. I love King Harold. King Harold, yeah, oh, legend, yeah. Good old favourite of mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think George Saint will win. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's. You can only back him because it's heavy ground, because he needs them all. He needs the ground to slow him all down, don't he? But Wing Canton's a funny track. I don't know if you you noted, noted this when you rode there, Batch, but particularly over you hurdles. Well, well, good courses like Wing Canton. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> particularly over hurdles. I have this this weird theory about Wing Canton, right? Um, which is they, they they turn into the straight, and then they turn the straight. Looks like the one in front's going to win. They jump the second last, and then suddenly it capitulates, and something comes down between those last two hurdles. There's a big run, isn't there, between yeah, the second run, last yeah. and the last. Yeah. And the race often changes complexion totally between the second last hurdle and the final hurdle. Mm. Now, I know that this is a chase, and there's more mm. fences in in the way, which kind of can stop that momentum. But I do see. Uh, George Saint just running on relentlessly up that long straight and sort of out grinding them in this horrible ground, typical Venetia style. Yeah. He's, a, he's a terrible price at two to one, but I think he's by far the most likely winner yeah, of the race. Yeah, I mean, I think he probably is the most likely winner. I, I went for I went for Ghost Eddie, who's a massive drifter. I can't quite is this, understand. Is this a Dan Skelton? This yeah. is a Dan Skelton mm. horse. Who, yes, he's a veteran, but he's actually been running very, How very old is he? well. Uh, he's he's twelve. 12. Twelve. He's only twelve. Yeah. Only. I backed, I backed our deal across on Tuesday, mate. Thirteen-year-old. He doesn't look at no rod. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he more like you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't as grey as you, is he? <laughs> he ain't as, he's not as grey as you. Um, look, look, he's run an absolute blinder in a two and a half mile um, veterans chase at Cheltenham. A miles better race than this. Yeah. Uh, finishing uh, fourth to um, Sipage, Lord de Menil in in second. Yeah. Uh, you know, the first, second and fifth, Sam Brown, were all being well punted for the for the veterans final that would have been would have been taking mm. place today. Yeah. They were all in single figures for that race. Um and I think I think all of them would be odds on <laughs> to win this. They like, might, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and so I just I can't understand why he's turned to one myself. Mm. He's been a massive drifter. I, I was with him a lot of times last season, but I sort of gave up on him a little bit. It's had a funny season, hasn't he, old Dan Skelton? It's a bit disappointing, hasn't it, being so yeah, far yeah. for him? Like, Protector out, obviously yeah. blown out in the bet well, fair chase. Well, a lot of his big guns have not really got well, going. The horses are generally massively over bet as well. Mm, massively. Yeah. That's what worries point, me about it? Ghost Eddie drifting. Yeah. Because I think they'd, if they fancied it, it would be... Too strong. It'd be very strong in the market. Mm. But that's, that's the... And when you see a Dan Skelton market mover, you sort of jump on, like, the big handicaps. And that's the only thing that worry me with this, that he is a bit of a drifter. Right, OK. 
Okay, right, one more race from Wincanton to look at. We go to the 315, a two and a half mile, uh, two mile, five and a half furlong handicap hurdle. And this is the one you want to take on, Jamie, individualist. Yep, he's the boost also. Yep, he's one we want to get beat this afternoon. I think we do have plenty of chances against him. I mean, on the face of it, the four pound rise for such a wide margin win looks fairly generous, but it, it, the race did rather fall apart last week. So, Intimate's been really well backed. Uh, Astronomic View was strong in the market when he ran well at Bangor last time. Obviously, Tom Siegel's put up Don't Rightly Know. And uh, both myself and Leon are like Bumpy Johnson. So, hopefully, we've got uh, plenty of chances of getting the favourite beat. Right, what do you reckon, uh, Rodders? Well, it's Nichols, isn't it? So, uh, Wincant and Nichols probably be difficult to beat, won't it? Individualist, is that what it's called? Yeah. 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 But I've backed a, a, you know, this is the thing, isn't it? You sit here and you go, oh, why am I doing this? But I have done it, you know. Now, I'm backing the Simon L trained runner here to beat Paul Nichols running You've heard around, of around Wincant. I have heard of him, but I mean, he's, he's not Paul Nichols, you know. <laughs> What's he famous for, Roddy? Oh, no idea. Rare clouds. <laughs> Mm. Rare clown. Last time out at uh, Chepstow, was beating uh, half a length into third. It should have won, I thought. Made a mistake at the last and uh, just got nobbled near the line. Uh, he's now run three really solid races in a row for the first time in his career, really, since he came back from a long break. I just wonder if maybe he improved a little bit for that absence. And um, I think he's only one pound higher than, than for that good run at Chepstow last time. So, you know, you're sitting there and you're going, oh, I can't back a Simon Earl horse to win on an ITV4 race, and then you're going, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it, and I did. But how many winners does Simon Earl have on ITV every year? Not mm. many. Well, no, don't be exactly. exactly. Like Mitchell yeah, like Mitchell Lunt changed me other one. Well, yeah, well, tell us all about Simon Earl then, mate. Go no, on, he, just, he runs his horses with no back shoes on. Uh, why? <laughs> I don't know, just his, just his preference, yeah. yeah. Does it work? Does it work? Oh, saves money. Yeah, <laughs> haven't had that many winners on ITV. <laughs> I, I, no, I, don't, I don't mean to have a go at these fellas, but you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, when absolutely. You're, yeah, when yeah, you're yeah, a punter, he's going in, he's you going got, in against uh, the big guns. He's going like, in it's against like the big guns. Like anything, it's like listen. He's he's more than capable, and well capable of training, and it's just having the ammunition. It it comes back to that. If you if you give them a good horse, half a decent horse, listen, they can train it and it'll win. It's just, yeah, we've, we've had you know. We have, <laughs> horses train a handful of trainers train a handful of horses and won gold cups, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, more than once. Right, you know, so yeah, it, it can be done. So you're saying it's a good horse. Give him a good horse. If it's good enough, if it's good enough, the trainer's good enough. Yeah, well that's Oh, that's the way we've I, been, that's been that's here. That's the way I tend to look at it. We've been here before, we haven't know, we? <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have. That's the way I tend to look at it. Uh, you know, but obviously you've got to respect anything Paul Nichols runs at Wing County because he has so many winners there. But this individual East, I mean, that was a jocking basic. What he won last time, the runner-up was twenty-two pound out of the handicap or something. I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure about that. The thing I found interesting about this race at the five-day stage was that Paul Nichols had in the water side. Is it in the water yeah, side? Yeah. Entered. And I think he was having a sneak look because because he knows that it's miles better than it managed to show at Ascot last time. Mm. Wanted a sneak look to see what the hand handicap would give him, and he's got a really low mark for a horse that he was talking about running in the Challow at one point. Yeah. Uh, so keep an eye on him for the future. Uh, yeah. I don't know where he's going to go, but. Uh, what have you tipped in this? Uh, I, ha I, have, I actually haven't tipped in this race, but I would give a chance to intimate. I think I did just think it's going the right way for Venetia Williams. Yeah, well, that was that. That was the one for me. She's she's got a twenty-seven percent strike rate this season. Yeah. That goes back to you know she hasn't had that since the nineties. No, it's been an unbelievable I mean, she's year. Absolutely hasn't it? flying. So mm. yeah, there's no reason not to not to stick with a Venetia horse. No, he was obviously good in France. Come back at Utoxton, good third has had a wind operation, so it's definitely going to help. Individualist to say his wind looked impressively, but as you said. I think he's beat trees. He's yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He hasn't. He hasn't beat. He hasn't beat he? anything, and that's why I liked astronomic view of Sue Gardner's. I, I do like her as a and that's a typical train. What we're talking about, she can train. She had that good horse a few years ago that won the nice bumpers at mm. Ascot. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people were trying to I forget the name, but was trying to buy it. But this is. Turned it a bit of a loon, though, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Got though, I would have got rid of it. <laughs> can <laughs> snatched you remember? Their, snatched off. Can you remember the remember. name of it? No, I can't. Oh, no, can was I? it something express? Or? I don't know. That's a, yeah, I think you're right, but yeah. But she, this horse, it's been at banger, got beat by a horse of Venetia's, actually, called Tangan Yika, that went in, ran in the class two at Chepstow on Grand National Day. 
and run a, a good race, and that's good solid form. And she stepped him up in trip today. I just think at nine to two, I think it's good value, and they they are a very shrewd crowd. <coughs> so and I think there's been a little bit of money for it today. So astronaut. Got Lucy on. Lucy's on, yeah, and it's good. She rode a winner the couple of weeks ago, and she hadn't had she hadn't had a winner. For, she only rides for a month, but I say they're very sure. And she had a winner the other day, and I think it'd been a year. So, but that wouldn't bother me. She's more than capable. There we go. Astronomic view for you. I took uh, uh, rare clouds. Rare clouds, you a rare winner. Yeah, you can remember <laughs> Simon L. A rare winner for Rodders. No, no, for Simon L. <laughs> 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 and I'm going for I'm going for Intermet, and it was Bumpy Johnson for Leona and Jamie. Right. Right, now we're going to go to Ireland. We've got the great DJ, David Jennings, on the show. How are you, mate? Hello, Paul. You right? You well? Very good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Yeah, halfway through this. <laughs> How are you feeling? Fortune. Glad to have you on, glad, glad, glad to have you on, mate. What have you got for us today? We've got some uh, racing at Cork. Mm. Anything you like there? Yeah, it's, it's one of them cards I often find the first, especially in Ireland, the programme has changed so much since the Dublin Racing Festival come in. So January in Ireland is quite tame, apart from the Lawlers and Ace Novice Hurdle, which is a great one tomorrow at Nace. So uh, I often find the Saturday cards, especially in January, are kind of ones you could kind of leave or take. Like they're not anything spectacular, but it is interesting from a punting point of view at Cork today. There's been a big move for Will Wilde in the opening race, the 12-12. Uh, actually, the charity bet of Johnny Deneen and up in the ante, Will Wild, five to two earlier on this morning, now into eleven to eight. So a big move for Will Wild and Pagan, the Willie Mullins horse in that race, gone completely the other way, gone out to as big as three to one, having been about seven to four. So that's interesting. Big move for Flamber in the second race as well, uh, into six to five from around about seven to four this morning. Largy Hill is going to be a short price in the third race, the one twenty two, and uh, the one horse I do like on the card keels is in the one fifty seven extrapolation. For Richard O'Brien, he is better known as a, a flat trainer, but he does train a few jumpers, and uh, Danny Mullins takes the ride. I actually thought he ran quite well at Punchestown on New Year's Eve. Uh, it was a big gamble on an Eddie Colley horse called Catch the Beast, and Extrapolation was a big drifter, but he was beaten 13 and a half lengths, but he was bang there turning in, and uh, I'd say the winner and even the second are quite well handicapped, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Extrapolation was able to defy a mark of uh, uh, 125. Oh. It's, a, it's a solid enough race, but oh. I think he's got a good chance. OK, DJ. Now, listen, when, when, uh, yesterday morning, when it looked like we might be losing Wing Canton as well as, uh, as, well as Sandown, this was the one race that I actually looked at. Uh, put me off to Capo Glory. I just thought he might be a little bit too classy for a lot of them. Absolutely. If he's he's drifting, it's funny. If there was money for him this morning, I would have been reasonably keen on him, and I would have thought he was a big danger to extrapolation. Uh, Haston ran for 156 days. Um, obviously, the last time we seen him was in the Galway Hurdle, and a lot of people, a lot of shrewd judges, were giving him a chance in the Galway Hurdle. That was off 138. He's actually been dropped three pounds to 135. He is by far the best horse in the race, uh, as he's got top weight and he's rated 125. So that tells you. But he could be a good bit better than that. I would just like to see a little bit of market confidence. So I would say if you do fancy the Cap of Glory, maybe play it late, see if the money arrives, because uh, he could, as you say, be a different league to, the, to these. But because he hasn't been backed, I'm with extrapolation. Fair enough. Now, we've got a good card tomorrow. You've got the Lawlers of Nice. Um, what is that going to tell us about Cheltenham coming up? Uh, it's going to tell us plenty because I think you're you're definitely going to have the favourite for either the Ballymore or the Albert Bartlett afterwards because it's Firefox against Il Atlantique. They obviously met at Fairy House last season in a bumper at Easter and Firefox won by three quarters of a length. Uh, Firefox to me looks a real pro uh, since since he's come back this season. You know when he won his bumper at Downright, he wasn't he wasn't you know breathtaking or anything, but he was just real professional and he he got the job done without ever looking like he was going to be beaten. And when he did beat Ballyburn at Fairy House again, it was real like he he was real professional. There was no mistakes. Jack set the tempo, he dictated the pace, he dictated the race, and, you know, Ballyburn had every chance, was a bit slow at the second last, and then Firefox was gone. Ballyburn is now favourite for the for, for the Bally, Ballymore, that's a lot of Ballys, and uh, <laughs> Firefox, uh, Firefox could usurp him as favourite if he wins this, but it's a good race, Keels, I'm sure you've had a look at it. Like, the one horse that I think is spectacularly overpriced is Lecky Watson. Like, I think you can get 16s or maybe even 20s about Lecky Watson. Look, Lecky Watson is a frustrating horse. He often, like, 
looks awkward and even when he won his maiden hurdle he did everything wrong and he still won um shannon Roy looked to have won that race and and lecky watson kind of came after the last after being really keen and when he when he was beaten by slade steel at navin um i just got the impression the better the race that lecky watson runs in the better he's going to be because they're going to be going to stride quicker he's going to be in his comfort zone he's not going to be keen and Danny Mullins, who actually won the race last year on Champ Kiley, uh, he rides Lecky Watson, which would suggest that he's a stable second string. He mightn't be as good as it, uh, as good or as professional as Il Atlantique, but I cannot believe the price of Lecky Watson. I think he's a far better horse than his price of 16 or even 20 to 1 gives him wow. credit for. I'd be surprised if he went off that big heels. Interesting, mate. And Leona was putting up one uh, earlier on as well for this race as well. Croke Park, is it? Croke Park, yeah. Yeah, Crow Park is uh, is Gordon Elliott's uh, Gigginstown horse. Typical Gigginstown Gordon Elliott horse. Future stay and chaser. Uh, I, I, like he looked beaten at one stage in that Mungsfield novice hurdle at, at, at Navan at the Navan uh, Racing Festival in, in November. It's the same weekend as the the November meeting at Cheltenham. He actually looked beaten coming down to the last. I talk because Mel Monroe looked to have got first run. But he actually won quite convincingly in the end. He won by over three lengths. Search for Glory was third, and he won afterwards at Cork as well. So the form looks quite strong. Um, he's one of these kids. He's deceptive. He uh, he doesn't look very fancy, but he keeps doing quite fancy things. So he's definitely got a chance. But Crow Park is, I think, around about seven or eight to one, and Lecky Watson is double his price, and I think that's just wrong. Lecky Watson. Now, you like that horse, don't you, DJ? You didn't you back the I actually, I actually, last time I out? actually don't. You don't? I actually, I did. I fancied him that day at Navin as well. I actually, I kind of don't like when I actually fancy him because he's not the type of horse that you want to be fancying because he's kind of languid and awkward. And like when you watch him in a race, you kind of go, oh God, I can't believe him after backing this fella. But I think he's got tons of ability and I am utterly convinced the better the race, the better he'll be. Mm, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Well, there we go. Well, uh, uh, I'm glad you, you you kept that conversation. I have no idea what DJ was saying because uh, I blame the producers, but uh, the batteries run out in my earpiece. So oh, I have no idea what's going on there. But nice what a to, bonus for you, then. Nice too. to hear from you, DJ. I'm sure you're going to stay on for the rest of the show. We're going to talk about a couple of races at uh, at Plumpton. I'm Plumpton. Uh, also going to talk about a new show uh, that you're involved with with William Hill uh, called Inside Track. What's, what's all that about? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we've done four episodes. Four episodes just talking about New Year's resolutions, good horses in the past, jockeys. So yeah, I was done it with Charlie Austin and McCoy. Obviously, he was on the top five list. Obviously, I didn't put him there. Oh, how did that go down? <laughs> oh, like a lead balloon. <laughs> <laughs> I did pre-warn him. I said, "You're not going to be number one." AP, as simple as that. There's only one goat for me, and that's Richard Dunwoody. Yeah. Dun Dunwoody. Dunwoody's the man, is he? Not Ruby, not John, not John Frankham. Why Richard Dunwoody? The only reason I chose Woody over Frankham is I saw a lot more of Woody and rode against him. Um, I mean, I've seen Frankham. Frankham is... He was unbelievable. I saw him one year, every year at the horse show. They did the jump jockeys show jumping. So there was Frankham, Sam Thomas, A.P. McCoy, Sam Twiston Davis. So... All them boys went, Sammy, McCoy, and then Frankham come out. And it was just like watching a master at work. He could have stayed in that ring and competed in one of the classes afterwards. Because mm. he, it, before he became a jockey, he was a very, very top class show jumper. Was he? And he could, they mm. say he could put horses on a 10 pence piece. If you put a 10 pence piece in front of a fence, he was that good. He first came on my radar in the eight, sometime in the mid 80s. Uh, and I'd backed a horse called Von Trapp at Cheltenham, and he literally picked it up off the floor. It was one of those, virtually fell and won. And I always remember telling all my mates, and then we were at school, like, you know what I mean? Telling all my mates, you know, this, this guy's brilliant. Now, in fairness, because he won, had you been on it, I'd have been saying this guy's brilliant as well. So I, I could have been easily, wrong you could have been been easily won, couldn't I? <laughs> but, but no, so I, you know, I always followed him. He was, he, he was great, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he was, he was very good on the morning line, and he was just... He was just and I was lucky enough. He throughout my career, I used to I, when I went, used to work up in Lambourne, I used to pop in there and he'd uh, give me some very good advice and help me throughout my riding career. So yeah, very very good. All right, now Sunday racing, Premier. one of your fa Premier racing, one of your favourite tracks. Well, Plumpton, Plumpton. is a, a Premier racetrack for me. How many it? winners did you ride around there? I Two? rode most. I rode most of my winners around there. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I had yeah. I was yeah. 
I was top jockey around there for a few years, only because I had so many rides <laughs> and rode for local trainers. Yeah, so it's. It's yeah. a strange track, isn't it? Like up here one way, down here the other. You know, like sharp bends at either end. I always think try and kick on down that far side, get clear, and then hold on. Depending on the ground, that work? depending on the ground. I mean, I mean, obviously, I've ridden loads of races. Well, I think you're in loads of races out there. Yeah. yeah, you could, you could, you could nick a race there. You could test horses. Again, going back on road, there was gone downhill, and I knew my horse jumped, and the horse that was upside me, I knew his jumping was a little bit iffy. So I put the gun to his head, and I kicked on, and he, he's, he's jumping, come unstuck, and that made. But yeah, you can. It's still a long. It's still a long way from home. So on, on goodish ground, you'll get away with that. But if you you kick there on on softish ground, you'll. I always like hold my breath when my back is like coming to that that fence, just at, right at the top. You know, the first one going down the back straight. Horrible thing. Like, yeah. oh, that looks a bit, you know, because it's on the downhill, isn't yeah. it? As they come down, it's like a bit of a drop afterwards. That's one of those. That's one of those fences you come into, and you're trying so hard to see a stride. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, I never saw many. <laughs> <laughs> So you just half the time just shut your eyes and pray for the best. Right, yeah, well, well, we've got two races to look at, and while it is Sussex National Day, the actual most valuable race of the day is the handicap hurdle at two fifteen. Jamie, do you have anything on that at the moment? You, do you do indeed? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we priced it up yesterday afternoon after the decks. Uh, light bet and heat so far, obviously, but uh, early signs are that Elder Allen, El Dorado Allen, is going to be uh, a solid favourite. Uh, it's pretty easy to make a case up for from such a lower hurdles mark. Uh, the other interesting bet we've seen is for Maria De Pale, who on the face of it has uh, a lot to prove, but uh, somebody somewhere thinks he's uh, going to bounce back to form tomorrow. He certainly does. What do you think then, brothers? Yeah, I thought El Dorado Allen would be hard to beat, but before I saw the prices come out, of course, I probably wasn't expecting to be 5-2 favourite, but he, of course, was fourth in the Coral Gold Cup, wasn't he? I think he's potentially a good thing. Yeah, he could be. He's £10 lower than his chase mark, isn't he? Well, well this is it. This is the funny, this is the funny thing about him, isn't it? Because, I mean... The last time he raced over hurdles, he was rated in the 150s. Mm. He hasn't got any worse. In fact, he got considerably better over fences. So how does he get? How does he now get yep. a mark ten pound lower than he is over fences? And you got Fred Gingell on there. Well, you got you got Fred Gingell on claiming, it, claiming, what, five, um, pound? claiming five. five pound. So. And you know he's always been a nippy little horse as well, mm. hasn't he? So he'll, he'll handle it round there, won't he? Yeah, yeah, he definitely handle it round there. The only worrying thing about he's to me, he's just forgotten how to win. It's been a good while since he has. I, don't know, I know he's back over hurdles. He's off that mark. It's just he doesn't mind being in front though. No, he doesn't he's, mind. You know, he had bounded clear in some races. Yeah. Isn't he? So I mean, you're more looking that he is far better than the rest yeah. of these. So yeah. you think that that should see him through, and that will take him to the finish line. And see, Freddie Gingell, great lad. It was great to see him win. I was down when he won the Holden Cup and. I saw Tiz, I've sort of been friends with Tiz, I went to the yard next morning and he's just a, he's just a real nice grounded lad and he, he deserves all the luck he's getting. It's very hard to look away from that, I mean it's, I did like the Walford horse, it did, it's won two class threes, I know this is a class two but... He's a professional winner though isn't he? Y yes, that's what I like about him, he's, he's a winner and... I mean, on the blind side was just behind him at Sandown, seventeen to two. But yeah, I just for that reason, that reason only, he knows how to win. Yes, El Dorado Allen is far superior than these, but to me, he's forgotten how to win. It's interesting that Jamie says there's money for uh, Mario De Pere. Yeah, that, yeah. Right, because I really fancied this horse two runs ago at Fosslas, and uh, I backed it. I had a really good price on it. The money came for it. And the jockey got injured at the start. He got kicked just as, as they were about to jump off. Jockey got injured and it got withdrawn at the start. Um, it had some really good form over hurdles early in its career. It was rated in the 130s, down to 120 odd now. It ran last time back over hurdles, uh, Carlisle or somewhere like that, ran poorly, pulled up. But when it had run previously at Carlisle over fences, it jumped like an absolute idiot. Mm. You know, literally belted. And that's one of the easier tracks straight. to get round Carlisle. You know, and he did remarkably well, finished fourth, considering how much of a, a mess he made of some of the fences there. So the ability with Mario de Pau is still there. He's well handicapped. And the money's coming. It wouldn't be a huge surprise is if he, he was to come out of it. No, I think El Dorado will win. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, just got just got piqued my interest when right. Jamie said that the money's coming right. from Mario okay. Power. Okay, it's, Joe, it's uh, Peter Bowen, isn't it? Yeah, so, Bowen, yeah. All right, DJ, have you ever been to Plumpton? Can you hear me now, Kills? I can now, mate. Yeah, you can hear him now. Oh, wow. Very professional. I was this show, say some terrible things about you. <laughs> as long as you don't uh, say terrible things about Plumpton, I'll let you off. <laughs> <laughs> I I have never been to Plumpton. Uh, oh, you've missed out. You've missed you've out. You've got to come, mate. You've got yeah. to come. I've been to like you know the Monday at Cheltenham. They have a couple of meetings. Well, Plumpton Stratford. is on the Monday at Cheltenham. And Stratford, it? yeah, Stratford. yeah, that's right, yeah. And Taunton, I think. And I remember one year Stratford was called off and we were going to go somewhere and it was a choice between Plumpton and Taunton. We ended up going to Taunton, I think, because it was closer. But uh, I'd love to go there. And I actually think them Monday meetings at Plumpton are, are terrific. Like, you always get a really good novice chase and uh, there's always a couple of maiden hurdles on the card that, that like, looking ahead to the spring festivals even might throw up a good horse or so. But uh, on this race here, Keels, I, I'm completely with you here with El Dorado. Alain. Quiz question for you is, when was the last time he won a race? It's 20... Oh, was it 2021, was it? Wasn't it? Hogan Gold Cup, is it? <laughs> it was the 2022 Denman Chase. Oh, Denman when Eldorado oh, Allen beat Royal Pagai was second. That's it, Robert. And yeah. Clander's Oboe was third. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, obviously, he's probably not quite at that level at the moment. But the last time he ran over hurdles, as you say, Keels, was in the county hurdle in 2020, the COVID Cheltenham. He ran in the county hurdle that day and uh, he actually travelled well for a long way and then got really tired. Uh, but he was rated 100, I think he had 11 stone 12, he was rated 150 that day. As you say, Kiels, how he's able to run off 143, given he's a better horse now than he was then. Um, I'm just worried about him settling. I think if he settles nicely in the first circuit, I think he'd be extremely hard to beat. I actually don't think 5-2 to two is a bad price. No, nor do I. I think that might bounce him out in front. Yeah. And just see you later. Just needs to settle. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes when you get them out in front, they can settle. There's nothing, it's nothing chasing him. Yeah. Then. Yeah. yeah. I think I just, he's just, I just think he's going to like it around there as well. Yeah. I mean, he's not a, like a strong stayer, is he? No. Like, he's no, a no, fast no. stayer. You know. Yeah. I mean, DJ and, Ed, uh, and I had this discussion last week, of course, about fast stayers and real stayers. Mm. You know, he's like Tiupu, isn't he? He's a fast stayer. You don't really stay, but but you get away with it around the track <laughs> we, like we'll Plumpton. We'll start in that one again. We'll be here till half eleven. Like a track like Pumpton will be ideal for him, won't it? Fast, yeah, nippy, around those bends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree with that. Not quite sure I agree with that. You, you <laughs> I'll get you there. there. And I know DJ, and I know DJ doesn't. Right, let's move on. Final race, the Sussex National. And um, we've got some better for Jamie. Yep, Tom and Mary's... Uh, favourite and has been supported. We were 4-1 to one yesterday and I was hoping I'd put it in at a defensive enough price. He's one that I like. He ran well at Eltonham in a stronger race than this last time. Would have finished closer but for a late mistake after being backed at uh, big odds. So he, he's been well backed and bits and pieces for a couple of the others. Rose of Arcadia and Gold Clement. Righto. Who do we like here, chaps? I like Rose of Arcadia. Joe Tizard's obviously won the race last year. Ran at Cheltenham and uh, jumping was a little bit disappointing. She just she got hampered and everything sort of didn't go right for her that day. Then back at Newbury, jumping was a lot more better, improved. So I'd give her a chance. But there's loads of these you can give chances to. Gold Claremont and the other mare in the race, Andrew Irvins, knows how to win, won at Fakenham and beating Espapade that day. There's plenty of winners. Dom and Mary, as well. when you, one of the Bridgewaters, he's another shrewd trainer. Ran at, ran at Plumpton, actually, full foot Plumpton. Yeah. And then not a bad run at I thought it was Cheltenham. quite eye-catching at Cheltenham. I thought it was good I, at Cheltenham, you know, yeah. I can understand why, why he was putting it, putting it favourite um, yeah. after that. I thought it was quite an eye because he belted the second last. Yeah. But, you know, ran yeah, really I thought well that was, yeah, I thought it was a, a good run at Cheltenham. And it's a better race than this, wasn't it, basically? Yeah, sporting ace, good winner at Cheltenham. So, there's, listen, there's... Tommy Bow, good winner. At, obviously, won the yeah, Sedgefield Durham National. So he won at Newton Abbott in the summer. Yeah, there. Tommy Bow, he won well there. So day. there's plenty. There's listen. There's plenty there. It's very, very competitive. Well, I just I I chose sided with Roosevelt. And we got okay. Venetia in the mud as well on S Party mm -hmm. as well. S Party, yeah. Who did yeah. you like, brothers? I like the two pipe runners, which are not on your list. So Co Madrick. Uh, right. is 20 odd to one and Sidi Ishmael who's 50 to one or something I thought they both run well so you've not taken this seriously then <laughs> <laughs> Jack Tudor's cho chosen a ride to CEO Madrick which right. uh, you know suggests that that's the stable number one uh, I will have a bit on both though at the huge prices um, 
Now, this horse they, they got from France, this EO Madrick. It, it had been running over there, and then they pitched it straight into the race that, uh, you know, turned into the best race the whole season at uh, Cheltenham Festival, uh, won by the Grand National winner. Corrette Trambler. 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 Yeah. Trambler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corrette Trambler won it. Uh, fast or slow was second, and yeah, they pitched him straight in there, I think it was, and he ran, obviously, appallingly because he's just not up to that class, is he? But I think they were trying to do what they've done in the past. Sometimes they have these horses come from France, pipes, and they, and then they win a big handicap first time out from France. Well, mm -hmm. They did it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they've done it. I yeah. forgot, forgot what they were called. The orange colours stuck back. Yeah, like green and green. The Celebre Dalen colours. They did yeah, it a couple yeah, of times with horses yeah. that came from France, running a big handicap Cheltenham, and then one first time up Cheltenham. Yeah. Anyway, then they then they put it away and then read the stable tour at the start of this season. And, he said, and Pipe said about his CEO Madrick, must go left-handed, does everything left, um, must have soft ground, and definitely wants further than three miles and... Well, he'd been running over two and a half in France. So I think that if if, if you're pipey, you're sitting there going, right, well, well what, what race can we run in him? He had him in the uh, Welsh Grand National, pulled him out on the count of unsuitable ground, despite saying that he absolutely must have testing ground. But he did give him a prep at Newbury over hurdles, uh, first time out, again, well beaten. But he surely must have been thinking, stay in handicap chase, left-handed, really testing ground, must have been thinking... Sussex National, surely. There we go. There we go. Good 20, argument. 25 That's to 1. Great argument. In fact, 25 to 1. Almost as good an argument as you made for Golden Sun at Newbury last week. <laughs> what, what, <no. laughs> yeah, I think, I think that was the case of the sniper in the stand, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen horse go out well, quite as quickly as that. DJ, one. did you have a look at the Sussex National? I did, yeah, yeah. Just the way Rodgers was talking there, I wonder is this one of the ones, you know, that pops up every so often that. Rodders comes up with some mad philosophy and every so often, every decade or so. <laughs> every so often, I thought to... most of the time, DJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every decade or, or millennium, they do tend to win. Um, uh, I actually, earlier on the week, I was with Matty. I was with, uh, I was with Rose of Arca Arcadia. But do you know what? I just look back at that Cheltenham race and like Dom and Mary like, finished a good distance ahead of Rose of Arcadia at Cheltenham. I think it was maybe eight lengths ahead and absolutely like clattered the second last and would have been a lot closer and probably i said absolutely definitely would have finished in the first five had had, had dom mary not clattered the second last so rose of arcadia is a lot of ground to make up on uh dom of mary and i just think the race is perfect for for dom of mary uh the right favorite and a little bit like uh, eldorado allen the previous race uh there um i know i know it's favorite but i thought it could be a little bit shorter even yeah, I wouldn't. I would not disagree with that, DJ. Now, come to the end of the show. Finally, always finally. flies when you're my last. Fun. My last ever day presenting. Hopefully. Oh, I don't think this is. Yeah, a, you'll be this back is just the beginning, Gil. This is just the beginning. <laughs> and uh, we've got naps to go now. All these naps will be boosted on William Hill if you look at the specials uh, on the morning on the morning post show. So we will stick with you, DJ. What have you got? The nap of the day. I'm leaving at Lake Hills. I'm hoping to come with a late surge. I'm going to the 7.45 at Kempton, would you believe? And a horse called Bascule for Richard Hughes and uh, and George Rook. I thought it ran a cracker over a mile and a half last time at, at Wolverhampton. That was his first run since May at Chester. Uh, running off a mark of 87. Had been 91. I think it's well handicapped. I think it's the perfect race. We'll get a nice toe into the race. There's a bit of pace on. And around about 5-2, to two, I think. Bascule! is the better day in the 745 at Kempton. Have you had a little word for that one, DJ? No, no, no I just seen it. I, no, absolutely not. I just seen it, I seen it running at uh, Wolverhampton. It ran in that vaguely Royal race. Do you remember the, the Gosden thing, who what, was like eight to 15? What are you doing watching all weather racing in the winter? What's going on? Well, it's always on in the background. So I'd be working away and there'd be races on in the background oh. the whole time. And uh, I specifically remember that race at Wolverhampton. And I remember, Bascule was one that one of the many hundreds and thousands that go into my tracker. And I said, the next time Bascule turns up, hopefully over two miles, Bascule will win. And it's showing up over two miles, five to two, get on. Wow, wow. Well, there you go. Get on. We'll have to, get we'll have to get stuck into that one later on, won't we? Definitely. If we've got anything left. If we're still awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are coming for a drink. <laughs> 
sure what's your nap, Rodgers? My nap is a mini Yates in the 2.05 uh, at Wing Canton. I just thought last time out, it was a really good race, a much better race than this. He was held up midfield, stayed on really strongly, very promising return from such a long absence. He, like you say, has gone up £10, which is a slight downside, but this is a weak race. Going to be a big winner for Mitchell Hunt. Right, fair enough. Right, Jamie, have you got a nap? Yeah, uh, Pompey Johnson for me, as mentioned earlier. Hopefully the uh, switch back to hurdles works the Oracle fit. Excellent. Mine's go steady at Wing Canton, so last word with me. You go, Glen Coco, at Newcastle Ooh. in the bumper for Donald McCain. Winner at Kelso on its first start. OK, it only beat four rivals, but one by six lengths. Add a little bit in hand. Danger will probably be a rare runner for Cole Burke. Naylor, Lioness. They says it's a doubtful stayer, but... It wouldn't be running a bumper. If they, I think they do think it stays. So it'd be interesting what the market says about that. But I think Donald McCain's in the bumper at Newcastle. Excellent. Right. Thanks for joining us, chaps. Thanks, DJ. Thanks, Jamie. That's all we've got time for. Please join us again next week when I won't be here. You said that last week. Well, I might be here. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>